Good afternoon, parents. You've been invited to join us today because you have a child, children, or are expecting and have questions such as, why does my child do what they do and how do I effectively parent them through their stuff? Or you might be wondering, my parenting worked with my first child, but it's completely ineffective with my second. What gives? Well, today we'll be going over child temperament and individualized discipline strategies that may shed some light on what you and your child are going through and equip you for the challenge at hand. Thank you for being a part of this presentation and please hold your questions until the very end. The attachment theory declares that a strong emotional and physical bond to one primary caregiver in our first years of life is critical to our development. If this happens, we feel safe to explore the world around us. If this attachment does not take place, we feel insecure and we're afraid of the world around us, causing us to withdraw and neglect valuable learning opportunities that the world environment has to offer. Children who have healthy attachment tend to have stronger developed confidence and social skills, thus finding greater success in life. Unattached children often suffer a lack of trust in others and struggle with relationships, stress, and anxiety. Secure attachment is developed through physical touch, effective and loving communication, eye contact, and parental self-regulation as it aids in the regulating of the child. Insecure attachment can be a result of unpredictable parenting, a lack of attention, and hostile environments which promote fear and insecurity. This disorganizes a child's understanding of love and safety. Not providing for the needs of a child is a primary factor in unattachment. This child determines that to avoid pain, he or she must hide their true feelings and eventually avoid all social situations. Proper attachment is vital for the healthy development of an individual. Every child has a unique personality. Children are born with distinct ways of thinking, feeling, and acting. This inborn genetic wiring is called temperament and is an extremely important component to your child's personality. Parents Partner states, by understanding your child's personality and working with it, you will find parenting more fulfilling and you will yield better results. Understanding builds strong emotional connectedness with your child, enabling you to appreciate the unique way your child sees their world. And when a child feels understood and accepted, they usually want to please the one who understands them. This knowledge helps us know how to effectively parent our child depending on his or her unique temperament. What might work on one child will most likely not work on the next. Discipline must vary depending on the child's temperament. For example, being extra relational with a child who is an introvert will not effectively yield the result that we desire. Likewise, being high task with a child who is high relationship will also prove ineffective. We must learn to meet a child where they are in temperament, and part of this requires us to identify their individual needs. Understanding Emotion Through Temperament Choleric, the extroverted, task-oriented child, likes to be boss, high energy, direct, impulsive, impatient. This is the strong-willed child. How to discipline? Give her hard, useful, responsible work with clear beginnings and endings. Let this child help you with yard work, take out garbage, carry heavy bags, and use safe tools. Give her jobs that have immediate visible results, especially if something heavy is to be lifted. During an outburst, the only effective thing you can do is consistently put the child somewhere where she and others are safe, such as her room. Eventually, this, this child will self-regulate by going to that safe place without direction. It is best not to interact with the child during a tantrum. Let the fire burn itself out, at which point you can speak with the child, listen, and help her activate some perspective. The second child is the melancholic child, who is introverted and task-oriented. This child likes things to be done correctly, almost demands a routine, and likes being by themselves and contemplative. This child needs cheerfulness and encouragement, so be optimistic, kind, and friendly. Helping this child refocus constantly is absolutely necessary. Eventually, he will learn to cope and self-regulate. 
keep him busy with not overloading or overwhelming him, but busyness may draw the child out of himself. Wrath, anger, and harshness can cause deep scars for this child, and he does not respond well to yelling. He takes everything to heart and is very sensitive. Severe and or rough punishment can drive the child deeper into introspection and melancholic. Discipline with firmness, communicating thoroughly with understanding and kindness. The phlegmatic child is introverted and relationship oriented. This child likes cooperating, likes calm, slow paced environments and likes sharing. These children are very easy to parent. This child strives for ease, comfort, and relaxation, and tends to be happy. Humor and joy come easily to them. She is typically thoughtful, reflective, expressive, patient, and careful. She is emotionally stable, anchored, and of all the temperaments, the phlegmatic has the capacity to be the most spiritually gifted. She struggles with organization, so the parent needs to model self-discipline. She can also tend to procrastinate and be indecisive. However, avoid doing everything and making decisions for her, though it might seem easier. Instead, teach her responsibility and use kind, motivating words. Give her downtime to relax. She will need plenty of encouragement and praise to motivate her. She also needs to be pursued, so be intentional in the relationship, especially with communication. Lastly, we have the sanguine child, who is extrovert and relationship-oriented. She's socially active, energetic, likes being outdoors, highly imaginative, funny, and mischievous. This child is quite discerning and observant. She is also spontaneous, which makes things can um, often be started but not finished. Encourage her to see things through and offer help to complete tasks. Redirecting and refocusing her will help with self-control and self-discipline. Provide attention, affection, approval, acceptance constantly and consistently for her as these are her greatest needs. She will often comply with instruction and house rules as long as she feels encouraged and praised for doing so. Avoid being overcritical, but set a behavioral standard and stick to it or the sanguine child will charm her way out of consequences and responsibility. The first self-conscious emotions appear around the age of two. Emerging self-awareness opens a door to guilt, embarrassment, shame, and pride. The emotion of embarrassment first emerges when self-awareness develops to a point where a child is finally aware of him or herself. The child understands that she or he is the object of another's attention. These early self-conscious emotions appear as the child develops the ability to consider themselves in their interactions with others. Difficulty arises in their interpersonal relations since their emotions are likely to interfere with the needs, wants, and desires of others, influencing interpersonal conflict. Moving from early emotions to self-conscious emotions in society greatly influences the development of a child determining which situations elicit which emotions, how to appropriately express these new and big emotions, and what effects they have on others. Keep in mind that thousands of variables influence this development, including the biology of the species, cultural rules surrounding the child, and specific dispositional functions like temperament. The emergence of self-conscious evaluative emotion is unique only to the human condition and is what sets us apart in the animal kingdom. Self-regulation is the ability to manage emotion and behavior in accordance with the demands of the situation. 
It includes being able to resist highly emotional reactions to upsetting stimuli, to calm yourself down when emotions are loud, and to deal with ambiguity, change, blocked goals, and frustration without an emotional outburst. It is a set of skills that enables humans to direct their own behavior towards a goal despite the unpredictability of the world and one's own feelings. To foster emotional self-regulation in a child, the parent or teacher needs to help the child slow down, analyze, and choose an effective response instead. I leave you with this final quote from Dr. Matthew Rouse, a clinical psychologist at the Child Mind Institute. When children are a part of an environment that's reflective and analytic, as opposed to emotional and fast paced, they can learn to make better choices. Slowing down allows children to become more thoughtful, reflective, and self-aware. We need to slow down and model self-reflection, self-awareness, and self-regulation for our kids, which is also helpful and good for us as well. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. Have a blessed day.